Richmond Swearing the doors in the line And if she's mean and why she's screaming Then we'll rock, rock, never fall a good time Hi everyone, I'm Dominic, this is Brad and we're the next men You might know of us from our crazy four deck DJ sets Or some of the production we've done for a number of people Including ourselves uh, this is our little studio that we work in, this is where it all happens. Uh, we usually work with Logic Pro, that's kind of the heart of our studio. A mixture of in the box and some outboard. So uh, we'll show you around. So we're going to give you a look at uh, one of the tracks we're working on at the moment. It's a track by uh, a band called The Milk. If you want to check out their website, it's www.thisisthemilk.com. You can check out some demos and some different things on there. Check out where they're playing. So they're a four-piece band from uh, South End in Essex, um, and this is just a demo of one of the tracks. It was recorded in a studio in Wickford in Essex. It's actually in the drummer and bass player's house in their shed, so it was recorded in quite a lo-fi way into a into a, a PC running Cubase with a really really cheap simple sound card, and then we brought it here and started to work on it. Um, so the idea of the track was we wanted the drums to 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 remain kind of hip hop. Um, so it was a it was a live uh, kit recorded. So we wanted to mix the live kit with electronic sounds in order to make the the drums sound more like a hip hop beat. I'll play the beat first. So that's the beat. Um, so we use an eight oh eight. That was uh, that was made by Stylus, RMX. Um, we do tend to use quite a lot of the Spectrosonics plugins. We find them really good for uh, getting things started because there, there's so much on offer within them that you can just get things sounding um, to a kind of a, a good standard really, really quickly with them. Especially RMX for drums. Um, so it's just as a limiter and a vintage EQ. Not a lot really happening. It's pretty pretty much as it comes. And there's one more kick, which is uh, a sample kick. That's which just kick. adds, a, it is, it just adds a little bit of top, like literally just a little bit of top to the, the sound. And that's a sample, um, just sample from an old disco record uh, put into EXS24 with a pretty extreme EQ. Take all the all the bass. It just literally, I'll play the two together and then um, take off the 808. So you can hear that's with and that's without. So it just gives it like a a little bit more top. Okay, the, so there's two sampled snares. One sorry, one's a clap. Um, and one is a sample snare. These are also both stylus RMX. Just claps one literally, and snare snappy. Just two of the kind of pretty stock sounds. Again with effects, it's just the, just the kind of the, the standard limiter and EQ that it comes with. I'll basically I'll basically take the sounds, tune them. Um, and then affect them afterwards. I won't generally mess around too much with a uh, with the stylus itself, apart from maybe tuning it and maybe putting effects. If I'm if I'm if I'm wanting to get something specific. So now we come to the um, analog part of the kit, and this is how it sounds. So that's how it sounds. Um, the snare mic has a plugin called Decimal on it. Um, which is made by D16. It's, uh, it's, it's like £21 to buy. Um, it's a bit crusher that emulates um, classic drum machines like the SP1200 and the MPC16, the Lin drum and, and old samplers like the em original emulators. Um, it's just a bit crusher, so I've just used SP1200, um, fiddle about with the, the preamp and the output and the, the dry to wet um, until I think it sounds good because I want the the kind of, especially the snares to sound more like a hip hop kit. So I've used a decimal on the snare and also on a live clap where I've used SP1200 as well um, and that EQ 
using things like bit crushers we find really useful because you know we used to work with emu samplers, big rack mounts, and they did give you a particular sound, and um, it was perhaps harder to emulate when when soft samplers were early, when when they were young, and now there are kind of like more advanced ones and better plugins. We can actually get really fat drum sounds that previously were only attainable with that old kit. But these days, it, the, these things really help us, you know, get things up to that standard and, and the sound that we used to have. That's the, the analog part of the kit. Oh, there's a, um, there's a um, tambourine that was recorded by the, by the lads, and um, that's just got a bit of reverb on it. Um, generally, for their recordings, when I'm doing the demos, I use the Space Designer, which comes with, obviously, obviously comes with Logic. And I was, I've been using the old vintage reverb, which works really nicely as a kind of overall sort of utility reverb for everything, really. I start one project, and, and for this, because I wanted to eventually uh, get the drums just down to a loop that I could use as a loop on the screen, I, I'll create a separate drum project, get the drums sounding good, and then import a, a, just a stereo file of the drums into a new project and work on the rest of the song. Um, so yeah, I've grouped the drums and used a plugin called Camel Fat, which again is a, is a really cheap plugin, it's about 50 quid I think. Um, and I've just used the compressor, it does have a, a bit crusher and it's got four different types of distortion, um, and filters and LFOs and stuff, a bandpass filter and, and different filters, um, and a thing called Magic EQ which kind of is a bit like a filter bank, it sort of creates a, gives you lower frequencies and sort of um, enhances lower frequencies. Um, I find it's a bit unreliable and I don't use it very much. I just use the compressor um, and it's really simple because it's basically just got a release and an amount so you can just turn the compressor up and down. All it does is it it, it gives you a breathing, a nice br uh, the drums a nice breathing kind of effect um, without you losing the punch of the individual sounds. Um, it, it does get a bit harsh sometimes. Um, I think Camel Fat's one of those plugins that, you know, there's some that you use for shaping and just making sure things are smooth, you know, simple compressors and EQs and stuff. Camel Fat is, is most definitely an effects processor and, and if you're looking for something different, you want things to sound crunchy, you want things to sound a bit unpredictable, um, you just switch it on and mess around with it until you find something a bit different and, and I find it really, or we both find it really easy and quick to use um, and you can, you can create some really dynamic stuff with it. Um, so if I play the play the, the the drums without camel fat off, and then just uh, without camel fat on, and then just turn it on, you can hear the, the difference. That's the, the kit without it, and I turn it on. You can hear there's just a massive improvement there. Like the whole thing sounds more open. There's more highs and more lows. Um, it's great for drums. Sometimes it does stuff like that. <laughs> so I, I, I had those. I also I bet I, I grouped the um the kicks separately. I use Camel Fat again, the compressor, and a simple EQ where I kind of find the frequency in the bass, usually between 40 and 50 hertz that I really like, and just turn it up a bit. It's the easiest way to do it in my limited experience is to start with the drums and work the bass around that um, and even if you do boost a frequency around 50 hertz you don't boost it very much you can also side, use side chaining so when the kick hits the bass you know lowers in volume um, I just kind of suck it and see see whether it sounds good see whether I can make it sound good and, and try a few different things and if it doesn't sound good go back to the drawing board yeah. but it's just easy I think it's just easier to, to if you think about making hip-hop records and people would would sample um, drum loops historically and then use them um, it's the same process really you make a drum loop look and try and make it as good as possible and then you in effect sample it just like you would when you were sampling off an old record so you're stuck with the same limitations, but it also gives you the same, hopefully, a similar sound, you know. That's the drums, basically. Play everything together. What I've actually done in this case is I've, I've then used Decimal again. Um, 
over the whole drum, all, all of them together. I've then put them out through through an output, output one and two. Used the MPC 60 preset of the decimal and a limiter in a plugin called the Glue, which is a really nice compressor um, with a really nice side chain option um, and a nice limiter just to flatten it. Um, it but the, the decimal obviously uh, is a bit crusher and makes the makes the whole drum set distort. Um, if you are not careful with the glue, it'll also distort as well. Things get overcrowded. Um, but I've actually um, kind of deliberately done that in this case to give it extra distortion. So that's the overall sound. We find the glue to be um, a pretty exceptional compressor because we always used to like using outboard and get MOSFET compression sounds. Um, this one is approaching that kind of hardware sound. It's very soft, um, it's got brilliant side chaining capabilities, um, it does what you want it to do, it doesn't do anything unexpected. Some compressors can be quite heavy handed and this you, you get a lot of control over this one. And um, I don't know, it's, it's recommended for us, it's probably the, the best compressor we use I think. And again, it's it's not a particularly high end compressor. It's, I think it's about eighty pounds, so it, it 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 really works for us. I don't think you have to spend loads and loads of money. It's about using bits of kit carefully, um, and finding bits of kit that you like. You know, um, yeah. So we use the glue a lot. But one thing that isn't a good idea is to spend a whole load of money on plugins that that you really don't need. We find that spending a lot of time with one. Um, can give you great results in the same way that you used to spend ages with an analog synth and really have to dig within it uh, to get unique sounds that didn't sound too off the shelf and stuff. It's exactly the same with plugins. They've got so many parameters these days that you can get an awful lot out of just a few of them. And I, I don't know. We'd probably we'd probably say that learning just a few is actually more beneficial than than getting some huge collection and not really touching the surface of any of them. And, and with the, the the case with this milk record was that we, we wanted to demo it in an environment that wasn't too expensive um, and was um, where we had no time limitation so we used their studio to record and this studio to, to demo um, but the the idea was always to go into a bigger studio to complete the finished record um, and we've just completed the first single and that was um, mixed on an SSL desk, analog desk, but using Pro Tools, using Pro Tools 9 and um, a mixture of, of some uh, you know some plugins and some outboard, so a lot of the time with, with this these this stuff it was it was a kind of um, a way to just make a really high quality demo rather than completing. I mean I mean I, you could definitely mix mix records to a higher standard on this kit, but it but it wasn't um, wasn't an essential thing for this project. So I just wanted to get a good high high level demo. Um, I think. To be honest, with some of these tracks, it'll actually be difficult to get as good a result in a big studio because it, it, they've been carefully worked on. And I think the, you know, the, the performances you can get when you've got no time limitations, regardless of the kit you use, if you're a good player, you know, outweigh in some cases going into a big studio where you're very time pressured, and perhaps you're in an unusual recording in, environment as well. So you're not completely comfortable. You're not sitting on your drum kit in your shed on your own recording it. You know, there's also that. You know, we do quite a lot of processing in the box, and, and you've got all these things side chaining, and uh, and when you do that across a whole range of sounds, they start mixing with each other in a way that you're not particularly in control of, and if you then take the stems to a bigger studio or just another studio, you end up with a different sound, and it might not be as good as what you created the first time. We call it demo magic, and uh, it's been a problem since we started, hasn't it? You, you tend to come up with the first version of something, and more often than not, it's hard to beat it. In in the in the mixing during the mixing process of the first proper single for for the milk, um, I had a laptop in the studio with a Logic session open with the the original demo in it, and basically looked at that every stage and tried to transfer all of that to the final mix. So either either um, putting some plugins on, onto Pro Tools that were the ones that we used from from our studio, or um, just trying to recreate the same effect using, say, the, the the outboard version of the original sampler, and they're all very, you know, all very very similar. And it was an invaluable thing to have it there because the demo obviously, you know, worked really well. So, I've just brought the drums in 
um, and loop them. You can see there from. I have also added um, more claps. God knows why. So it's just got the same, probably the same you space design. Yeah. Yeah. No, not really. I have done, but not not really. I just whip up what's. The, I mean, they come up when I when I open the, the session. The space designer comes up and and a delay. So I just often just use what's there. So yeah, no EQ, or anything. That that's that's a that's a sample, and I can't. I would have made it probably using Stylus RMX with a couple of um. Uh, and I think there's. Two, I can think I can hear two sounds in there, so a clap and a snare or something mixed together. Yeah, so there's more of a more of a metallic snare and a clap, and then I've just used lots of space designer. I've also put a reverse cymbal in there. Which again will probably be stylus RMX and then just um, bounced and then reversed. Um, I'll see if there's any other percussion. Yeah, there's this, there's a crash cymbal which I think is Mitchell the drummer play, just playing a playing a separate cymbal. It's that kind of mix of a real one and one from a a synth. A soft synth that, that gives us a really nice spread out sound. You know, there's nothing wrong with mixing all these things together if they sound good. That's cool. I mean, Brad was aiming for a very organic sound with this track, and he's managed to do that using partly organic stuff and partly electronic stuff. Would that be right? Yep. Um, and the only other, <laughs> the only other thing I can say, kind of, per not percussive, but I've used some sweeps. That I made in Omnisphere, but again, I've just I've just sampled them. Got a bit of information going on. There. Um, there's a reverse one, and there's a forward one. So for this, I've used um, the Logic Tremolo, an EQ just to get rid of all the all the lower nasty frequencies, and I've automated a bandpass filter with lots of resonance on it in camel fat. And I, I, I just find like I just find camel fat really easy if you want to put kind of morphing effects. It's not particularly flashy, but um if you want to automate a low pass that's that's got a bit of character with resonance and or a band pass, I find camel fat just really easy to pick up and just fiddle about with. Um, it's really simple but it, it works in this case. I um, mean there's also some more space designer on this so Get the idea it just ah, sweeps in, does its thing. And then the front way is one. So these are the, this is the kind of guitar group. Um, again, really simple approach, just just use the Logic um, compressor and the Logic tape delay and I haven't even EQ'd it at all, I haven't even touched it with EQ. Sometimes we find if a part has a really nice overall sound to it then it's a very good starting point for mixing the rest of the track. So if you've got like a really nice guitar sound like this and you don't feel like there's too much low end in it and you can just go with it, then it's really nice to build the track around it from somewhere that you know is good already. Quite often if we take a, a synth line in from the Moog, um, it just sounds so good already that we build everything around it rather than taking anything out of it or adding anything at all. I also use this plugin, King Dubby, on some of that guitar, this stuff. Um, it's a free plug-in and um, the delay is always completely out of time, a bit like a space echo, but it sounds, sounds nice. It's, it's, it's great for us because we've, we've got a real space echo uh, and a few years ago we used it in, in just about every track and we were always looking for something that could replace it, that we could work with on laptops when we're on the move and stuff like that and uh, King Dubby's the one, it really does the job, it's brilliant. 
Um, there's several other tracks of guitar going on. Um, and that was recorded with a reverb from from a from a cab when it was originally recorded with a with a wah pedal and a and a reverb. And I haven't done anything to that. I've just put it out of the channel. There's also some piano which was recorded again by by the band in, in their shed. Um, so with this, inter interestingly, they've got an old kind of honky tonk piano which is completely out of tune. So they record the, the part and it's about 35 cents out. So I use the pitch shifter, uh, the, logic, the logic pitch shifter, just to put it in tune basically. So if you turn the pitch shifter off, that's how out of, out of tune it is, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so I, I use that, I use the glue again and I use the um, tape delay. Logic tape delay for the piano. You get a few glitches, but um, it's either that or have the piano completely out of tune and, and a real piano uh, and a, and a pia piano plug in. Um, I don't know, for some reason, it just doesn't sound as good, so you leave the real piano in and accept the glitches. There's a clav, which is Logic EVD6, which is kind of kind of okay. We use guitar rig, which is sometimes good for, for amp emulation. And it's got a really nice drag and drop interface this, which we really like, so you can go for di different amps, distortion stuff, modulation stuff, EQ, velocity stuff, different reverbs, and then different tools. And you can just drag and drop anywhere in the chain with each one of them. And this I've used a, a couple of different distortions and a spring reverb, um, just to add a little bit of bite to the, to the cloud sound. Um, we find guitar rigs pretty good once you know you've got a guitar and we've got a Fender Deluxe over there, so you can record in nice electric guitar sounds just with a, a dynamic mic in front of it, and then you can use that plug-in to just shape things a little bit, and, and you can, you know, you can get any sound you want from any decade really. But again, it's best to kind of sit with it and, and come up with your own stuff. There are two other instruments in this. There's a Rose, which is a plug-in um, recorded. Recorded not on this computer, recorded on on a PC. I'm not exactly sure which plugin it is. It's not the uh, it's not the Native Instruments one. It's another one. I think it's a, a, a free, another free one. Um, and on this, there's just reverb and delay. But there, there's a bit of distortion and amp emulation from the original from their recording. I'm not sure what they used. Uh, one more thing. There's a horn sample which was provided again by the band. Don't know where it came from. Is that recorded in the shed? Probably. So uh, yeah, that that that's it for the music. So I can maybe play how the music goes. <laughs> together and there's another section where it gets a bit more loud. You get the idea. So all, all we have left is vocals. Um, also recorded in the, sh the band Shed, and they like to record lots of um, lots of BBs together and stuff. They're like an Essex gospel choir. Yeah, That's what they sound like together. And the vocals again were, were uh, not really treated. I've used I used a little bit of auto tune. And camel fat as the compressor. It just it's 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 just a really good way of limiting it. 
limiting them. I've also put it through a bit of outboard, the LA um, compressor, although it's probably not doing very much, it's certainly not set up at the moment. Um, and then the BVs, I've used the glue, a bit of space design, and a bit of King Dubby on the vocals. So with the auto tune, I've just created a user scale, and I've just blacked out for some reason F and F sharp. So that so it's it's probably to correct one I can't remember off offhand, but it's probably to correct some small imperfection in the vocal, rather than being an overall um, rather than him needing any overall correction. It's probably one point where there's one slightly duff note, um, but it's a great take. So I've just just eliminated that the, the notes that aren't in the the scale that he sings. I don't generally use it um, for effects. I don't generally do that T pain kind of thing. I just um, just use it as a utility thing, really. You get an idea of how it all fits together. And that's it, really. Okay, so this is a... The, the beginnings of a beat. This is, um, it's like a new Next Men thing. Uh, we're doing some stuff at the moment which is above 120 BPM. Um, and <clears throat> it's just pretty much drums and bass with some processing at the moment. It hasn't got any vocals on it or anything like that. This is a very early beat. This is a whole different way of working. Before I even started, I put T-Rex on the master. Now, it's not doing too much. We've got an EQ. And then we've got a 670. Now, it's, again, it's, it's really not doing very much, but what it does is it enables you to work within compression while you're actually creating the track. And this is a really nice way of working, especially if you're starting with drums and bass, because they start to interact with each other. You get a sound that you otherwise wouldn't have got if you just left it open. Um, so it's, it's another way of working. It's not necessarily better. Um, it's just a different way of working, and we use it on some tracks. Um, so this has got there's a few bits of processing going on here, including a ring modulator, um, which gives you this really nice kind of strange, almost scientific kind of sci-fi film sound, which we use on a lot of our noises. Okay, so here there's, we're using Trillion. Um, again, the Spectrosonic stuff is really good to get you up and running and moving quickly because there's such a massive range of sounds in it that you can, you can start with an organic sound, a bass guitar, you can start with a synth, there's all sorts of places you can go. I've used a CS80 here and then tweaked it a bit to make it sound, you know, a little bit more unique. We don't like to use sounds as they are, straight up. We like to give them our own sort of impression. Um, and that, on its own, is just a very low frequency. I don't know whether it will come across on the, on the camera. And then there's another one playing the higher parts. And what I've done for that increase in pitch is actually just used the pitch bender to make it rise up because I didn't want it to just go up in steps chromatically I wanted it to just sound like it's moving up on its own. Reverb wise here we're using the classic studio reverb. Um, we use this and Space Designer mostly that they're, they're both um, really flexible reverbs and they both sound brilliant. Um, you don't need much of it unless you're going for an effect, just a little bit here and there, and it really helps open the track up, especially when you're working in the box like we are with this track. Okay, so this drum set is almost a kind of funky house rhythm that we've got going on here. Um, we've got the contact sampler, which is playing a few bits. We're just using it for little bits of added percussion. Um, a lot of the parts of the drums I've actually made previously in contact and then bounced and carry on with them as audio. So, we've got all the drums coming into one place. 
And again, I did this from the beginning, so even though I've got separate kicks and snares and hi-hats and bits of percussion, I've stuck them all into one channel here, and again used T-Racks, just to kind of push them all together. Uh, and it gives you a nice breathing, pumping sound, which is hard to achieve if you don't actually put a compressor on the bus. On the master here, I've used T-Racks to bring it all together and make it sound nice. It's not doing much, again, it's just, it's just, you know, taking off those top transients. And then there's actually a bit of camel fat on the master, and then a CSR reverb. Now, we don't do that very often, but in this case, because it's such a spacious tune with just bass and drums, having a little bit of reverb over the whole mix actually makes it sound, you know, it just, it just gives it a little bit more uh, kind of spaciousness than you would have had if you don't do it. There's a kick drum here, which is playing, but it's muted. And what I'm using that for is the side chain for everything else in the track. It's actually doing a house floor to the floor rhythm, even though there are gaps in the beat. And I've tied almost everything else to it. So every time the kick hits, it pulls a little hole in the track and the, the kick drum comes through nice and clear. Okay, so you can hear on this sound that there's a, a ring shift. And what I've done is I've grouped together several whooshes, including a, a bass reverb, which is backwards now. And then put on this ring shifter which is doing this. The frequency is actually starting fast and getting slower. Now as a producer you're always looking at new ways to lead up to a drop um, and using things like this give you a, a slightly a nice alternative to you know getting the kick drum running up and all that stuff. Just It's just another way of, of, of leading up to a drop basically. I've actually drawn in a box for outputs one and two, and then put T-Rex, Camel Fat and CSR on it. And that means I'm automating, and you can see it on the screen, I'm automating effects on the actual main outputs. Um, again, it's not something we do very often, but it can give you a lot of control over the, the general sound of the track towards the end. And it's a, it's a fairly new way of mixing. You know, I'm, I'm, this kind of isn't the traditional way of, of doing a normal mix and then having it mastered. I'm mixing and mastering all the time as I make the track here. I'm basically automating EQ, amounts of reverb and compression to give the track an overall sound rather than just affecting something within the track. Depending on the project we want to work on, we do have different templates. So there's some which are say, if we're going to do a podcast, because we do all of our podcasts within Logic as well, we just use a 32 channel 8 bus and it's just for audios. There might be some effects in there that we use um, through MIDI and samplers, but for the most part we're just recording tracks in and mixing them as if they were a DJ set. And we'd use just a very simple template for that. Um, then there are other templates which have everything kind of ready for you to use. So I'll have um, Spectrasonics uh, up and ready to go, stylus, usually to start with just to get a drum track going. Um, and maybe contact. And as you can see here, they're all ready to go with their outputs. So I've got contact, and then I've already got channels for snares, hats, percussion, loops, effects, miscellaneous, and kicks too, and snares, and snares too. And I can get started putting together the drums very quickly, and I don't have to do that every time I open it. And it's the same with stylus. I've got all the outputs all ready to go so that I can start mixing more traditionally straight away. We've been the next men. That's Dom. I'm Brad. Thanks for coming and checking out our studio and how we work. Um, we do a monthly podcast. Check it out on thenextmen.com forward slash podcast. Check us out on Twitter at forward slash thenextmen. Check us out on Facebook at forward slash thenextmen. Just check us out. See you later.